Hey everyone, Dreibred here. Pokemon Gold with only one tentacle was surprisingly fast. Let's follow that up with an Emerald run. Today's the day that we figure out, would I be able to beat Pokemon Emerald with a team of only fossil Pokemon? Not gonna lie, I'm pretty excited for this one. I really don't know what to expect. There's only two fossils in Emerald, so we're only gonna have two Pokemon, and neither of them are absolutely amazing, so we've got some challenge. Credilly and Armaldo are the evolved forms of the fossils, so that's what we're gonna have by the end of the game. One's rock and bug, and the other is rock and grass, so we're looking like we're gonna have more type variety than in the red fossil run. By level up, they learn a few cool things, but by TM, they actually both have some pretty wide move selection. I bet we can make a pretty strong team out of these two. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all of this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I'm confident that I can win eventually, and I think I can even beat Steven Stone, but it's gonna take a ton of grinding. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use fossil Pokemon. I'll need other Pokemon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokemon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeball, held items, and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoy the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. Right off the bat, I use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Trico with Anorith so that we can do the whole run with it. I name him Morton. You know, because it's a two Pokemon run, like a tag team, and both of the Pokemon are rock types? Someone got it. Anyway, our ability is Battle Armor, so we can't get crit. That's kind of cool. We only have Scratch, so we can't really do much damage, but our stats aren't too horrible for this early in the game. A good nature, too. Extra attack and less special defense. Alright, so while we fight our way through the early game, let's go over why I picked Anorith as our starting Pokemon. Originally, I was thinking that we'd take Lilip since it's part grass type, but weirdly enough in this game, it never learns an attacking grass move by level up. That's weird, right? Well, to make it weirder, Anorith learns Water Gun at level 19. No, I don't know why. We aren't even Water type and never become Water type, so it's a bit weird, but I'm not gonna complain. Plus, Anorith has better stats than Lilip anyway. That thing's crazy slow and kinda weak overall. At least Anorith can get some decent attack. Anyway, we have the Rock Gym coming up first, and I doubt I can beat it without Water Gun, but it's worth a try. So by the time we get to the Rock Gym, it's not even close. See, you'd think it might be like a back and forth chip battle since we're both Rock type, but Bug is actually weak to Rock, so their Rock Tombs take a crazy amount of our health out. This isn't even close, and we don't learn Water Gun till level 19, so we have to grind. So this grind always feels pretty slow. There's a certain level of dread to starting Emerald runs, knowing that I usually have to grind here. Roxanne and Emerald is just a lot tougher than most first gym leaders. It's nice knowing that we actually have an end goal though. I'm pretty sure that the moment we hit level 19, we can win. Nosepass might take a few shots to take down, but we'll be a lot stronger by level 19, so I'm hoping for a first try. Once hitting level 19, we had a super easy time with the first Geodude, landing a one shot thanks to the double type advantage. Second is Nosepass though, who doesn't take as much damage from Water Gun. It took two Rock Tombs to take us down to red health, and she just kept holding on with potion after potion. I thought we were doomed when she missed a Rock Tomb, letting us get the final hit. Even with two speed downs, we're still faster than our last Geodude, so we actually got the win. After that stunning victory, I decided to go straight after the fighting gym early rather than after hunting down a bunch of trainers. Thanks to being part bug type, their fighting moves will only be neutral against us, so I figure we stand a chance. Turns out, it went way worse than I expected it would. For the first time in a while, we couldn't even get past him a chop. Yeah, he uses items to heal and stuff, but really, we weren't dealing great damage, and that's with a silk scarf giving us more power. I'll have to come back with a few more levels. Okay, now Scratch is two-shotting Machop, so that's much better. Meditate never landed a hit since he just kept failing Focus Punch, and last is Makahita. Now, he actually was doing some decent damage early on with Vital Throw, but that's a move that always goes second, so at least we get priority. Thanks to him guzzling potions, I thought we were doomed, especially after Reversal took us down to only 2 health, and he healed back up to almost full. But then, we landed a crit for the win. I'll take it, whatever gets us to the fossil faster. Next up is our rival fight. It starts with Wingull, who just missed Supersonic and went down. Kabuskin was second, but our water gun wasn't really doing a ton. His Ember messed us up, but thanks to him wasting time with Focus Energy, we only got hit once before knocking him out, learning Metal Claw in the process. It's a cool move, but I doubt we'll use it long. 
Anyway, last was Lombre, who went down in two scratches. Not bad. So next up is the Electric Gym, but that's usually pretty brutal, so I decided to start fighting the trainers in the area. There aren't any TM moves we want that we can get right now, and we don't really learn any awesome moves for this fight, but for what must be the first time in my entire history of playing Pokémon, I actually think I'm gonna use Mud Sport. I know, right? Usually it's just the useless move that your ground type learns. In this game, what it does is it cuts the power of electric moves in half until I switch Pokémon. Well, I have no one to switch to for that fight, so it might actually work out. Let's just hope that we hit hard enough when we get there. Electric Gym Time Now I gave this one a ton of tries, and although Mudsport did a great job at reducing the damage they dealt, we still got paralyzed all the time. On my best attempt we got all the way to Magneton, but it still took us down easily. Man, we're at level 30 and it's not even close. I might just have to level up until 37 to pick up Ancient Power. I mean, we could learn Rock Tomb with our TM, but that misses and has less power. I don't think it'll cut it. I tried again at level 35, but it didn't really go much better. We could one-shot Voltorb and Electrike, but Magneton still took us down pretty easily. Okay, well, in two levels we get Ancient Power. It's not much stronger, but it's got the same type attack bonus, so I think it'll be enough. So this still actually took a few tries. We always get paralyzed at the start, and two Ancient Powers will just make him land in the range to heal, so we have to scratch and then Ancient Power twice to knock him out. Against a Manetric, we take lots of damage, but he's not as tanky, so two shots take him down. Alright, the next two major fights of the game are against Team Megma's leader Maxi and the Fire Gym. Rock resists fire, but we're also part bug type, so it'll be neutral. We do have Water Gun, and I'm sure it'll do a good job against the fire and ground dual types, but I'm not sure it'll be strong enough to do any serious damage to the solo fire types. For them, we've got Ancient Power, and I really hope that'll be strong enough to take down something like Torkoal. On our way, we hit level 40 and evolved into Armaldo, so that's a big jump in our attack stat. Maybe the Fire Gym will go alright. Before that, though, we have Maxi. Thankfully, our newfound attack power led us to totally demolishing his whole team, so I'm feeling pretty good about that upcoming Fire Gym. Speaking of, it went amazingly, with Water Gun one-shotting her whole team until Torkoal, who was one-shot with Ancient Power. I'm happy that went well. On our way there, I took the Root Fossil. I knew that if I didn't say what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Feels really weird saying this, considering... Well, we aren't on our way to somewhere else, and you pretty much had a guarantee that I'd be taking the Root Fossil, but it's my gimmick, so I have to. People click on an MDB Pokemon Challenge video to hear my dumb fossil gag. You've got to give the people what they want. Right, so we take it over to Devoncorp right away and revive it to get Lily. We name it Gibson, and if you don't automatically know it from Morton and Gibson, then I, I can't help you. Our nature is calm, so more special defense and less attack, opposite of Morton's nature. Losing attack kinda sucks, since most of our moves are physical, but I'm planning on getting a TM for Giga Drain on this guy anyway, so maybe it won't be too big of a deal. I appreciate the tankiness. Its speed is awful though, and it's always gonna be awful. I think we'll mostly just be using Gibson for type coverage and leaving the bulk of the fighting for Morton. Now let's go take out Norman. This went super well. None of his team could handle our newfound high attack stat other than Slacking, who of course took forever to take down because of Hyper Potions, but never actually hit us thanks to using Counter and having Truant. We really did evolve just in time for this stage in the game. Time to get traveling again. I bet it's weird to see me on the water now, right? We have some TMs to pick up. There's nothing too crazy that we can get right now, but with Norman taken out, there's a guy back in Duford who will give us the TM for Sludge Bomb that Gibson can learn. There's also a lady out east who will give us the Giga Drain TM if we show her a grass type. That's another move for Gibson. We have to get that Giga Drain one after the Flying Gym since that's on our way, but that's fine, it's not like we need it there anyway. If we're gonna make some use of Gibson, we may as well do the footwork to overhaul his moveset early. While we're traveling, it's time for this episode's Chimera sponsorship. Spring is here, allegedly, wouldn't know it from looking out my window, but just because the weather sucks in southern Ontario, Canada, doesn't mean that you can't buy some nice clothes from Chimera's new spring collection. Go ahead and click that Chimera link in the description if you want to check out all of the new stuff, plenty of which you can see on screen. As always, you can use the code MADRYBREAD at checkout to let them know that I sent you and to get a discount. It's thanks to these sponsorships that I'm able to make these longer challenge videos, since the financial freedom they give me allows me to spend extra time on the video without worrying about if I'm uploading enough to pay the bills. So if you want to help support the show, go check out Chimera and let them know that I sent you. Let's get back to the video. 
On my way to the Flying Gym is the last required rival fight, but it was super easy like usual. I don't know how the Flying Gym is gonna go though, Skarmory is usually an issue. First was Swablu, who went down in one scratch. Second was Pelipper, who hung on a little bit better and managed to confuse us with Supersonic. We hit ourselves a little bit, but Pelipper just kept spamming Protect, so as soon as we hit another scratch, he went down. As Skarmory came out, we went straight for Ancient Power. We got hurt by Steel Wing, but two shots took it down. Tropius was a one-shot with Ancient Power, and last was Altaria, who couldn't take a hit either. Okay, I figured Skarmory was the only real threat. Okay, so we've got a decent bit of travel again. We've got to do the whole Megma base, including a Maxi fight, then we've got to make our way over to the Psychic Gym. It's gonna be nice that that fight won't be a two-on-one for once. We're still just using Morton for everything while Gibson's level catches up with an experience share. Not that we'd really want to use him here anyway, considering it's Morton who has Ancient Power. I figure Maxi will be easy, but we need Gibson to be stronger for the upcoming Psychic fight. So, I hope this works out. Mighty N is first, so our attack is down from Intimidate, but not for long because on the first Ancient Power, it activated its effect, boosting all of our stats by a stage. Thanks to Scary Face, we still lost some speed, but one Ancient Power was able to finish it after that. Camerupt went down in one Water Gun, and last was Crobat, who is faster than us, confused us, and made us hit ourselves. It's fine, his wing attack hardly did anything, and one Ancient Power crushed him. Okay, next is the double battle at the Psychic Gym, and this one is always crazy to recap. Oh, and of course this took me six tries since their move choice is pretty much random. On this one, Zetu spent enough time trying to use Calm Mind that we had a decent chance to fight Clay Doll first, with Water Gun and Giga Drain, of course. They don't do a ton of damage, but on lucky attempts we managed to take them down on the second round. We also managed to use Ancient Power to take down Zatu before he ever got a chance to do an offensive move, so their first two Pokemon went down early. Once we were up against Soul Rock and Lunatone, I focused on Lunatone. Thanks to him using Calm Mind though, he ended up really tanking the first round, making us switch target to Soul Rock. We really lucked out on them doing weird things like Solar Beam and Hypnosis when their Solar Beam hardly hurt, and Hypnosis just misses all the time. When Soul Rock went down, we could just focus our attacks on Lunatone, and it didn't last much longer. Honestly, I should have been using Ancient Power on Lunatone earlier. I always forget that Rock doesn't resist Rock. We're in the home stretch now. All this left is the Archie fight, the Water Gym, Wally, and then we're at the Elite Four. I'm sure Wally will be easy, especially since there's an Earthquake TM on the way to him, but I'm a bit worried about the Water Gym. Morton's weak to water, and Gibson still hasn't caught up in level enough to handle the fight on his own. I wouldn't be surprised if I ended up having to grind. So, Archie starts the same as Maxi, Mighty Anna lowers our attack. He never dealt any real damage to us before going down, but I'm feeling the attack loss. Second was Crobat, who got us to hit ourselves like last time, but of course, he just went down to one Ancient Power. Last was Sharpedo, who boosted our attack and confused us with Swagger, getting us to actually deal quite a bit of damage to ourselves. But, uh, he didn't use a water move, so we won. Does he not know any water moves? He's the leader of Team Aqua, what was that? Okay, last was the Water Gym. Love Disc went down in one slash, and Celio goes down in one Ancient Power. Third is Crawdont, who actually hangs on and hits us real hard with Crab Hammer before going down. Thanks to that, Kingdra almost knocked us out right away, but we ended up powering up on Ancient Power, letting us get the knockout on the second hit. Last was Whizcash, so I went for Ancient Power again, forgetting that Ground resists Rock, so we went down. That's fine, Gibson has a double type advantage with Giga Drain, so we easily finish him off. Last before the Elite Four is Wally. Unfortunately for him, he's Wally, so we only took like 30 damage in the entire fight. It's nothing personal, Wally. <laughs> you just kinda suck. Alright, now that we're at the Elite Four, let's take a look at our stats. Well, our stats are a lot better than usual considering we get to use evolved Pokemon, but I'm a little bit worried about our type coverage. We have a few options, but not much to actually deal with the types that we're going to be fighting. I'm going to replace Slash with Return so that we have a stronger move on Morton. That might be all I can do right now. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Dark Trainer Sydney. Mighty Anna, so our attack is down. We got Sand Attacked, but we still landed two shots for a knockout. Naturally, we have to switch as Crawdonk comes out since Morton wasn't going to hit anything anyway. Gibson is slower, but we healed so much off our one-shot with Giga Drain that we fully healed. Back out to Morton for Shift Tree, and he starts with a double team as we take him to a sliver with Return. He full restores, and our second one one-shot him. Absol is next, but he couldn't handle a single Return, and last is Cacturn, who also went down in one shot. 
Not bad. Second is Ghost Trainer Phoebe. Her Dusclops both have pressure, so we use double the power points fighting them. Knowing she uses that along with Protect to run us out, I tried using Water Pulse on rounds where I knew that she'd Protect. She went down fast, though. As the second Dusclops came out, I switched to Gibson to get rid of Confusion, but honestly, I'm not sure it was worth it. We did some decent damage at first, but she just full restored, so we're just wasting power points. Gibson doesn't hit hard enough. I switched back to Morton and had him finish it with Earthquake and Water Pulse. As Bayonet came out, we hit an Ancient Power that raised all of our stats, but she used Grudge. Knowing that I'd lose all my power points for a move, I finished it with Water Pulse. It's fine, I have elixirs for after the fight anyway. Sableye was a one-shot thanks to the power-up from Ancient Power, as was her last bayonet. Third is Ice Trainer Glacia. This was pretty awful though. The moment that Celio goes down, Walrein comes out and hits us hard and fast with Surf. I tried this a few times, but he always takes down Morton, and although Gibson can get a little bit farther into the fight, his level is too low and he only deals decent damage with a Giga Drain, a move that he only has five power points on. That's alright, I expected this. I'll come back after a proper grind. One badly needed grind later, and we're giving it another try. This time, we're faster than Walrein and hit it so hard that we one-shot it. Naturally, we sweep the rest of them with Ancient Power. Man, if one dude with Surf was that much of an issue, how bad is the Pokémon Champion fight gonna be? Fourth is Dragon Trainer Drake. First is his Shell Gone, who mostly just stalls, but ended up going down to a crit early anyway. For Kingdra, we use Gibson, knowing that he can tank a Surf if he needs to, and he does. Thankfully, our Giga Drain was healing enough that we hardly took any damage, and Sludge Bomb did a decent amount. We took him down with two-thirds of our health to spare. Back to Morton for Altaria, and we take it down with Ancient Power right away, plus we got the full stats boost. Thanks to that, the attack draw from Salamence wasn't as bad, and our Ancient Power landed yet another one-shot. Last was Flygon, and I decided to keep using Morton since we have the power-up, and it worked out because we crit return for a one-shot. Well, that was easy. Finally, the Pokémon Champion. Waylord is first, so knowing he'd go for Water Spout, I just hit him. It does more damage the more health he has, so taking him to low health makes it really weak. He didn't last long, and I got him to waste a full restore too. Ludicolo was second, and I went for Ancient Power and Return to take him down. All he used was Double Team. For Water Onyx, I switched to Gibson, knowing that he could handle the water moves in an attack drop. He spammed Dragon Dance while we started landing shots of Ancient Power and Sludge Bomb, trying to get him to low enough health that we can take him down, but not so low that he uses a full restore. It almost worked, but we ended up leaving him with a sliver so he healed. We spammed out some Ancient Powers and managed to crit for a knockout, but we took tons of damage first. It wasn't a very clean fight. Back to Morton for Melodic, and we got outsped and nearly taken out with Surf. Our return did decent damage, but he was able to finish both of us off easily thanks to his speed advantage. Okay, Gibson is far too low a level to pull his weight. I'll fight the entire Elite Four and see where we end up. After running through the Elite Four a ton more times for levels, we ended up here at level 79 with Morton and 70 on Gibson. This time, Wailord does even less damage thanks to us dropping him to a sliver, so his super effective water spout uh, did 11 damage. Yeah, he went down. Ludicolo was a one-shot with return, and this time for Water Onyx, Gibson didn't take much damage from Earthquake. We managed to confuse him right away, and Giga Drain and Ancient Power did an awesome job of taking him down. We even crit and got a stats boost at the end. Can't use the boost, though, since we have to switch back to Morton for Melodic. We're faster this time, and Return was a one-shot. Tentacruel is next, but he's part poison, so one Earthquake took him down. Last is Whiskash, so we switched into Gibson and let him use Mega Drain for the one-shot, letting us win the fight. With that win, we get into the Hall of Fame and win the run, but you know it's not over yet. There's a post-game fight with Steven Stone that I want to try. Funnily enough, two of his six Pokémon are actually Armaldo and Cradilly. Not really sure how those fights will go. Honestly, I don't think we can beat Steven until we get the whole team to level... I mean, at least 85. If we aren't a dozen levels ahead, I just don't think we're gonna hit hard enough. I went ahead and slapped a Shell Bell on Morton since we probably won't be using Return anyway. Let's give it a try. Okay, so I tried this fight a maddening 18 times and literally every single time but once we got hit by Toxic almost right away, making the fight impossible. We're slower than Skarmory and we take like 7 hits to make him faint because of his full restores. We need levels. 
Thankfully, you guys have already told me that I'm allowed to use rare candy cheats in the post game, since we've already won the challenge by this point. You know, I literally forgot I'm allowed to do this on the Tentacool run a couple weeks ago. Rare candy cheats always create such a beautiful mess. All right, let's keep trying. Here's our first try at level 85. This time Skarmory was slightly nicer and didn't use Toxic on the first round. He saved it for the third round, so at least we knocked him out. I still don't feel confident. Cradilly is next, so I landed a hit with Iron Tail to take him to an absolute sliver as he wastes time with Ingrain. Of course, he full restores right after, but our Iron Tail hits again to bring him to a sliver, then we win thanks to the speed advantage. Still, all those extra turns he wasted just made us take even more toxic damage. For our Maldo, I kept Morton in for a mirror match. One Ancient Power took him down, too easy. Clay Doll was next, so I finally switched to Gibson to use Confuse Ray and Giga Drain. Claydol used Reflect to buff his defense, so any confusion damage wouldn't do much, but it didn't matter. Giga Drain hit really hard. Next is pseudo-legendary Metagross, and Reflect is still up, so I tried to confuse him. We survived his Meteor Mash, but his attack raised from it, and when we got an opening thanks to confusion, we only dealt a very small amount of damage with Giga Drain. We really lucked out with him hitting himself three times in a row, but then he gave Metagross a full restore, and our crits hardly did any damage. We didn't last another hit. I tried to finish it with Morton, but he was way too hurt between Toxic, Spikes, and the previous fights. He outsped and one-shot. Let's try again at level 90. This time we have a weird Skarmory fight where it was back and forth for a bit. He healed, and then he just randomly switched out to Claydol at some point, so we switched to Gibson to take him down. I mean, it was easy, but that was weird. Back to Morton for Skarmory again, and we just take it out in one shot with Ancient Power. Cradilly was a one-shot with Iron Tail, and Armeldo was still a one-shot with Ancient Power. For Metagross, I sent in the wounded Gibson to confuse him, but we just got taken out by Meteor Mash. It's up to Morton now, but we're in way better shape than last time, so I go straight for Earthquake and do tons of damage. We then totally lucked out when he used Meteor Mash, and it missed, letting us take him down with full health. Last was Agron, but one Earthquake took him down. We actually won the Steven Stone fight! That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> I really liked that run. It was a good balance of not having to grind a ton, but still having pretty interesting battles. Yeah, we had to grind a bit at the start, and I did have to run through the Elite Four plenty near the end, but that's all pretty much to be expected in Emerald. I really hope you guys liked that run. The next challenge should be in two weeks on Saturday when we do another Emerald run. I usually try not to do the same game twice in a row, but it's been a while since we did Emerald, so why not? Gen 3 with only HM moves. Totally looking forward to having to use Cut to beat the Rock Chim. As always, I am looking forward to your suggestions in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. All right, outro bit time. Uh, what is there to talk about even? Oh, <laughs> sorry for the editing mistakes in the Tentacool video the other week. I know, it, hilarious coming from me apologizing for uh, editing mistakes, which I'm always apologizing for in the comments anyway. It's a one-man team. There's no other pair of eyes looking at these videos before they come out. It's me recording it and doing the script and editing it and all of that stuff. Usually people have a team for some kind of really big weekly challenge editing show thing or some kind of help or at least not a time limit, but not me. <laughs> Oh, and I think there was a point early in the video where I didn't even realize at the time, but apparently I showed the level 15 attempts at one of the Faulkner fights twice. That's because I didn't even realize until uh, I was like editing the video, I was missing the piece of footage for one of the Faulkner fights. So I was digging through like deleted footage because whenever I'm recording fights, I just delete all the fights that I don't think I'm going to use, the attempts I don't think I'm gonna use. And I seem to have deleted and forgotten to name the one that I was actually going to use for that part of the video that I was talking about. Thankfully, I don't like empty my recycling bin very often. Uh, so I was able to dig out the footage. Uh, but I guess I dug out the wrong footage? Either that, or I just accidentally put the wrong clip in twice. So I nearly fixed the problem and caught it, and managed to cause a different problem. Because this show is just absolutely beautiful like that.
sorry about that. At least it seems like most people find it um, entertaining more than they find it frustrating. At the end of the day, the way I look at it is it's a one man job. It seems like anyone who gets annoyed by the little editing mistakes seem to be just a vocal minority. And it seems like most people don't really mind that uh, I'm not perfect. <laughs> Not even close. You guys have no idea how much I flub these voiceovers and then have to edit it a bunch and cut out just flub after flub after flub. Trust me, I am not even remotely close to perfect. I mean, if any of you have watched my Let's Play show, my, my thousands and thousands and thousands of Let's Play videos on this channel, oh, you'll know that I can't string a sentence together. <laughs> All right, I need to get to editing this stuff because I really want to stream a bunch this week. I want to do more Legends Arceus because it's been like two months and I've been dying to play it, but I've been so busy with everything else. And that game was so fun. So I want to stream some more of that. And I want to stream some more Wrestling Empire because that game is hilarious and I love it to death. Uh, so I'm going to go get working on that stuff. Until next time, have a nice day.